I want to talk to us about priesthood. Priesthood. I know we've read the scriptures many times and a lot of us quote Bible. We make reference to the fact that we are priests. But have you sat down to really analyze what your responsibilities are? Because there were a lot of things that govern priesthood as pertaining to the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. And the Old Testament, the Bible said that they are shadows. Yeah, so the way they went about things, the ordinances, they are the same. The ordinances that we have in the Old Testament, they have not really changed in the New Testament. Just that the priesthood has changed. The priesthood has changed and not only has the priesthood changed, but also the things that are used in executing priesthood services. Whatever things that went into the execution of priesthood responsibilities in the Old Testament, they've also taken a different form. But the ordinances still stand. For example, there's an ordinance of what we call atonement, thanksgiving of intercession, of sacrifice, different ordinances that were in the Old Testament. The ordinances remain the same. But the priesthood has changed and then the things that went into it and the mode of execution, executing the priesthood service have changed. Yes, when you study through the scriptures, you find out that those are the things that have changed, but the ordinances have not changed. And that is the confusion a lot of Christians have. And to them, everything is passed. So they want to throw away also the ordinances. But no, the ordinances cannot be thrown away. There are ordinances that are everlasting ordinances. And it is part of the reason why we are having so many challenges. So people can argue, for instance, that oh, we are priests and all of that. And yet they don't know what role are you supposed to play as a priest. What are the ordinances that you are supposed to keep? Because a priest ministers to go on behalf of the people. A priest has a service on the altar. He has a service in the tabernacle, in the house of God. There are priestly services executed by the priests. So if you don't go back to study the Old Testament, you may not even know what are the responsibilities of the priests. And link it up with what your responsibilities are now. You only shout about you being a priest and then just think, oh, all the ordinances. They, no. There are everlasting ordinances. I told us that we deal with dispensational stuff and we deal with eternal stuff. Dispensational stuff may end with the dispensation, but eternal ordinances, they remain. They stay for long. And when you study through the New Testament, you may not find everything revealed. Why they've added both Old and New Testament is because we need all of them. We need both the Old and the New Testament. And don't look at something being in the Old Testament means that it is past. No. The Spirit of Christ has been in existence from Old Testament into the New Testament. So there are executions of the Spirit of Christ in the Old Testament. There are executions of the Spirit of Christ in the New Testament. And then what is in line with the operation of the Spirit of Christ that we still have to uphold. Now, let's look at priesthood. Melchizedek was the first priest that was mentioned. And when you come into the New Testament, they say that Jesus is an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews chapter 7, I think. Say that he is an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek was the first priest that is seen in the Bible in, in Genesis 14 20. That about, that's where we find Melchizedek that he, he showed up. Not so much is known about him. We only know that Abraham gave him a tithe and then he also ministered to Abraham bread and wine. I'm not going to dwell on Melchizedek. I just want to show you something, a few things about priesthood. So that we can walk with it. It's very important. Some of us, we come from villages that when you go to those villages, you find out that there are fetish priests. Priests that serve the idols. And they perform sacrifices. And other things too. 
ensure that the people are secure. Chapter 16. Let's, let's read something from Numbers chapter 16. Let me show you something about the responsibility of a priest. You know, the priest was ordained to represent the people before God. The priest is like all of us. That's why Jesus is a priest. The prophet represented God. He spoke God's mind to the people. While the priest represented the people before God. So if all the people are supposed to make a sacrifice, it is the priest that will be in charge. The execution of the priesthood assignment was on behalf of the people. Was for the people. That's why even in Titan, he said that because of the service they render, because they rendered the service in the name of the people, not in their own names. Though when he had to enter the Holy of Holy, the high priest had to himself make a sacrifice for himself. But apart from that, he even had to do that because he's supposed to go to the Holy of Holy to present the atoning sacrifice for all the people. If not that he had to enter that place, there will not be any need. And it is likely that when the priest even enters there, he may not return. If God finds him not fit, he may just go there and may not return. So when they are going, the rope they tie around their waist and with some kind of bells so that as they are still doing it, they will hear it ringing. If God strikes you and you fall down, it stops ringing and then they pull you out because nobody can enter there to go and bring your body. So the priest, the services that they rendered was for the people before God. That is one dimension of priesthood. So, there are certain things that they have to do. The first responsibility of the priest that I want to talk about is atonement. Atonement. So, we look at atonement in the context of our generation, the New Testament. And all the things that will fall under atonement. Because different priesthood services may fall under atonement. He says that, he says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer. Now, God's anger had been kindled. And if God's anger is kindled, the only person that could do something about the anger of God was the priest. Now, this form of service is forced under intercession, atonement. Intercession falls under atonement. It is the intercessory capacity of, of priesthood. The ability to stay the hand of God back. The ability to, to stay God's judgment. To cause God to withhold judgment. The ability to invoke God's mercy was part of the priest's responsibility. See, and Moses said unto Aaron, take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them for there's wrath gone out from the Lord and the plague is begun and Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation and behold the plague was begun among the people and he put on incense and made an atonement for the people and he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed so God's anger was kindled against the people because of something they did. And then God now releases a plague. People began to die. You know, when God's anger is kindled, within three minutes, about 2,000 people can go down. Three minutes is even to be dangerous that they execute those assignments. They are swift. The way they move. One second, that angel can execute everybody and move on. That is how powerful those angels are. So when the plague began, Moses now instructed Aaron because Aaron was now being taught the protocols of priesthood. It was Moses who was receiving the instructions because they had now been installed into the priesthood office. So God had to teach them. After some time, they may not need Moses because everything has now, you know, they could even write everything down, like the catalyst and the catechism. They have the books. So when you move from here, you stand here, you do like this. And then you, but this time they had not yet documented anything about what to do when there's a plague. So he had to instruct him, but the instruction had to go to the priest because the priest is the one who stands in the gap. And he says that when he put the incense on that altar, the Bible said that 
he stood in between what? The living and the dead. It is talking about his standing in the gap. In Ezekiel, God said, I sought for a man who will stand in the gap. That is priesthood. That is intercession. So, intercession falls under atonement. Intercession is one of the arms of atonement. It is not only about the offering of the blood of Jesus on the cross. Through intercession, we are granted the ability to atone for the sins of people. And the sad thing is that the church, we have not really utilized the atoning aspect of intercession. We've not used it yet. We've not atoned so much for people. When somebody had to die or when evil had to come upon a people, we have not so much used this ability to stop the hand of God because the church, we have not come to the point of understanding what to even do. Now, what are you going to invoke? Are you going to rebuke? Are you going to command? If God comes against somebody, are you going to rebuke or are you going to command? <laughs> See, because whenever God comes, there is what will cause God to stop. When the serpent came among the people, Moses instructed Aaron to make a blazing serpent. A metallic form or something like that. And then lift it up. That whoever will now look at it. Which was a type of Jesus. But that was what to do. Revelation. Let me show you something in Revelation. Quickly. Here we saw that it was an incense that was offered. So I want to show you something in connection with the incense that was offered. Then I will now talk about intercession. Because it's by intercession that we can preserve families. Preserve territories. Preserve ministries. The priestly dimension that we have left out of prayer. Usually, when we pray, it's for ourselves. But the priests were not executing for themselves, they were executing for the people. But in our generation, there are only few intercessors. There are many men praying, but only few intercessors. You can find a thousand people praying, but only probably about five of them may have the burden of intercession. If you lift a prayer about their family demon, the energy is different. I want to say there's a sister in the hospital. Let's pray. The short words, quickly. <laughs> Revelation chapter 5 verse 8. It says, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints he said that they have golden vase full of odors which are the prayers of the saints he says and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer now Aaron was instructed to put the incense on the censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. So, when we pray, what we are doing is that we are lifting incense. In the New Testament, priesthood, that's why I said that the ordinance may not be changed, but the things that are involved in executing priesthood assignments, executing the same ordinance, are changed. So, whereas Aaron may go and carry a physical incense, that was a shadow of a reality. Now, the incense might not be a physical incense. I know people do incense. They, they go and gather incense. And, you know, maybe they are gathering familiar spirits, probably. I cannot tell, but, you know, we know it's not apostolic. The New Testament apostles, we don't see any sign. But then there's a revelation of what that incense can be. The different things that can represent those incense. And he said one of them is what? It's the prayer of the saints. First one said the golden vase full of what odors. The odor is the same as incense, which are the prayers of the saints. In priesthood is where we lift incense, and when incense is lifted on the censer, like what we saw with Aaron, what happened was that the arm of God stayed. So in priesthood is atonement, and in atonement is intercession. Sometimes there can be a reason for judgment to even come to pass to take place but a priest can stand on the altar 
it is why we are supposed to know and understand the protocol of priesthood in the new testament because there are words that you must use there are things that you have to bring to play to cause the arm of god to be restrained and when darkness comes also there's an understanding because in intercession is also litigation it is like when they bring someone to court the lawyer they call him the advocate that word the same word also means intercessor the lawyer is an advocate so somebody who is supposed to die what will you bring on board because it is more than just praying and shouting that he shall not die or no what can you bring on board what understanding have you sustained as a priest because i said that the power of the, the execution of the service of the priest is dependent on his ability to figure out what is required at the time the first plague that we saw what happened was that aaron was instructed by moses to take an incense and then offer it the Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire there from off the altar. Even the fire, there's where to pick it from. You can't pick it from anywhere, it will be called a strange fire. That means that first of all, there should be a burning altar. There's a law that they give about the altar in Leviticus chapter 6, where it says that the fire on the altar shall not be put out, it should burn from the night to the morning. So that means that you always be fire because you don't know when <laughs> you don't understand you know and you see when satan wants to attack you or attack somebody around you what they may do is first they want to attack you first because they know those who stand as priests in family so sometimes they will have to attack you first when they attack you successfully they can now attack anybody around you and then successfully eliminate or bring to pass what their purpose what they will there are people whose attacks is not their attacks it's an attack of somebody it's just like when arm robbers are coming into a house and there's a watchman there's a security person they know that if they don't take out the security person they can be a threat to them so whoever is a watcher they have to now attempt to take that person out first when they successfully take that intercessor out when they quench your prayer altar then they cannot have free access sometimes they will bind the security people they will bind them hand foot everywhere and then they will keep them aside and once they are kept there they can take two hours they can take three hours to do whatever they want to do after that they move out he says and Moses said unto the Aaron take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them now this first one what we saw was that he was supposed to take a censer and then put an incense upon it put fire from the altar these are all representation of different stuff the fire is different from the prayer fire is not the same as prayer prayer can create fire but the fire burning it doesn't necessarily mean that you are praying at the time the fire can be burning whereas there's no prayer going on because already there has been supplies so he's letting you know that at every point in time there should be what fire and then it was an incense when it was the serpent that was biting them when you look at different events the serpent was biting them it was also a different instruction so i said that the power of priesthood is in your ability to know understand what to do in a given situation if not you can't atone you can't atone you can't intercede successfully but our first assignment as priest is intercession is atonement you need to understand when somebody has probably gone out of the way and then the person has come under a particular influence you have to be knowledgeable as a priest to understand what to do that 
this realm that this person has entered this is how to bring redemption it is atonement and that is intercession abraham knew how to do such intercession it was abraham that stood with god in genesis chapter 18 before the angels would get to sodom abraham was bargaining with god that is priesthood he was attempting to stand in the gap for lots and even for the people a lot of us we are more judgment conscious than and salvation conscious the priest that is supposed to make atonement is the one that is joining God to split fire because when the people did something wrong Moses will even now put his own life and his call you say that if you destroy them then blot my name from your books several times that you say if but if your family members now write to fight you right now you say oh Lord show power show them that you have been with me intercession territories cannot be ransomed until there are intercessors because when we do territorial warfare sometimes people don't understand it is part of our assignment when we do territorial warfare and then we are praying for a territory like as we are doing this person along the line we will be tackling Ghana sometimes people don't understand why we have to do because it is in the power of the priests to determine the states of the people and if no priest rises understand that there will always be priests there will be priests in darkness that will stand to ensure that the spirit of darkness gain control because whoever's priests are active is what determines which spirits gain control over the city over the territory the more demonic priests offer incense on their altar the more they are able to invite spirits, powers from Hades to deepen the bondage of a territory. And we as God's people, we are supposed to rise. It is the same in the family. Your assignment as a Christian is not only for yourself. Part of your prayer must be to cover the family. Some of you, your siblings, you have to cover them. It's important because if you don't cover them, something may go wrong. Some of you, God has never shown you a vision or you've not had a dream that maybe you are delivering your junior brother or somebody. <laughs> because you have not entered into that realm of intercession. But God will ordain you and anoint you as a priest. And you see, all of us who are in Christ are, are meant to be priests, but not everybody has discovered himself or has ascended that throne of priesthood to minister as a priest but God has found you as a priest and part of your responsibilities is what is intercession I said is what atonement we can change the order by priesthood we can change it by priesthood verdict that have stood for years can be altered if we can now take our place as priests, vetting that have stood in families, that have stood in territories. <laughs> no, a lot of the time we are so concerned about ourselves, right? We are so concerned. See, we need to understand the way God looks at things. I've told us many times that how you read things is not the way God reads things, and we are given different responsibilities and different assignments. We are not called to do the same things. No. We are not called to do the same things. John was a major prophet. He came in the spirit of Elijah, but John lived in the desert. That was the dwelling place of John. Meanwhile, when, when Jesus came, he said that he is the greatest among all that are born of women. John was the greatest. So I tell you that even those that you administer priesthood services to, to cover them, they might even look down on you sometimes. But you need to understand that that is not your problem. We are not just looking at our jobs and the things that we do because as much as you may find relevance in that on earth, when you show up before God, the ranking system of God is different from the ranking system of the earth. 
it is the intercession that you did because it could be that there are people that are brought under your radar of intercession and you are supposed to provide covering but maybe at the time that that covering was supposed to be provided we were concerned about so many things and the will of God couldn't come to pass <laughs> if, if we become selfish and we don't take our place as priests our territories will not be ransomed our families situations will not change there are some of us have told us that some of us your own assignment you know there's a generation that came the assignment they executed was to take the, the family into captivity they were the ones that went to consult and Yama and then lived all his or her life ensuring that the captivity of that spirit over the family is empowered is strengthened now when you also show up you know in a natural sense you may want to find relevance by trying to also be normal and having everything but listen your own assignment may be different maybe you, you are called to change the foundation of events your life cannot be normal it surely can't be normal because the priesthood of the family that mantle has been put upon you it's why nobody's praying like you <laughs> some of you all your siblings you are the only one who is speaking in tongues the whole family you are the one pursuing God what it means is that if you can intercede more you can gain ground for more of them it means that you are holding the key to their deliverance and you may not be able to gain access have access over them to lay hands on them necessarily but when you stand on your altar as a priest executing the assignment of intercession and atonement the arm of iniquity, the arm of wickedness shall be stayed. Sometimes the hand of God will be stayed. That's what Aaron did. He said when he lifted up incense, and we know from Revelation, he said the incense are the, what, the prayers of the saints. When he offered the incense on the, the censer, he said that, and the plague stayed. The plague stayed. What if there was no priesthood? God will come, but God will come through the protocols of priesthood. The hand of God shall be stayed, but it shall be stayed through the protocols of priesthood. You know, several times in the, old, in the Old Testament, he can come and then he begin to now execute because the people did the wrong thing. Listen, if wrong is happening, if men don't rise to intercede, wrong will continue. If will continue, when they arrested James and killed him with the sword, the church didn't pray. They killed him with the sword. And the devil went ahead and captured Peter also. And the only reason why Peter was delivered was because Rob said that Peter therefore was what kept in the prison. But he said what? But prayer was made of the church without ceasing on his behalf. So why was Peter delivered? Prayer, intercession, priesthood. Priesthood, angel wouldn't have come. It's the same in your family. You know, you can be praying, and people think people don't know what is going on. Don't follow the ignorance of men. They think prayer is to ask God for something. Prayer is multidimensional. There's so much that prayer does. It's not just about asking God for something. So you say, ah, what are you asking God that when you ask, God has not given you. But you don't know that once we are praying the Holy Ghost, we are stepping in the United Kingdoms. Different people are being delivered. God won't come until the priest perform their priestly services. God won't come. He won't come. He may know he ought to come, but he won't come. Study the scriptures. He won't come. For God to forgive the iniquity of the people, a priest had to come in. Jesus, the Bible said that he had to enter into the holy of holy heavens with his own blood. He had to execute a priestly service, a priestly assignment before atonement could take place on your behalf. A priest was required. 
there may be many prophecies hovering over people over families that will never come to pass because all of those prophecies they await the service of a priest they await the service of a priest meanwhile no priest is rising and you know <laughs> when somebody begins to rise families they are funny people The, the reason why we have witchcraft is because the demonic horn in the family, the demonic horns in the territory, they need a man to authorize their operations. They need a man to stand in the gap between them and, and their physical realm so that that man can authorize their activities in the family. So when they come, they locate somebody who has a prophetic call and then they now install witchcraft into that person's vessel. And then the witch now serves as a coordinator, coordinating the physical realm and the spirit realm. And then God now comes and finds out that this family has been in bondage for a long time. They are doing everything right physically, but demonic priests are burning incense on demonic altars, and spirits are gaining control, demonic forces are gaining control to enforce covenants, ancient covenants. And then God now put his hand on one of the sons. And the person now begins to pray. And all the anchors are getting angry. Because those demons enter them. Those demons now enter them and then say, tell him to stop, tell him to stop. They now get angry and say, why are you praying? Why don't you go and get work? Oh God, you are leaving because that guy is praying. Not that the only reason why you are alive is because that guy is praying so you may be praying and then everybody is angry at you and they don't know that they are surviving on you you would have died long ago ah, there are many times that i will see death so we, my siblings some of them i see that this one is going to die they don't even know they don't know the deliverances there's one they wanted to make the person to have brain tumor we have to intervene but you know i don't need to tell you that is what is going on but it is on the strength of the priesthood so if the devil want to now kill then he has to come and attack the priest <laughs> say priesthood there are some of us your surveillance will be about your children Sometimes we make certain statements because we know we are priests providing covering over children. So we can make certain statements that this one cannot happen here because we stand on our altar as priests. And we, by the priesthood, we know certain things that are not possible. You were priests. Your first service is atonement, which is intercession. Intercession comes in different forms. Atonement comes in different forms. But whatever be the case, you need to understand that without you, many things will go wrong. Without you ministering on the altar, many things will go wrong. You see, things going wrong might not be mean that people becoming poor. You see, people don't understand many things. Eh? What could be going wrong is not what you think is wrong. It is what the spirit are interested in. And sometimes what they are interested in, you may not even be interested because you don't know the value of it. So they may be quietly ministering at the background, whereas everything looks like oh, everything is okay. But when people begin to pray, what they are trying to do, they are go is it because priesthood goes to the foundation. For example, like many things can happen, but part of the things that we know cannot happen is that if we're a prophet, it's difficult for you to rise from this city. It is a taboo on the land. Either they corrupt you or you won't be able to make it. Many years may come. Even business can go on. Let's say there's economic boom. People are working and all of that. Now, you are interested in a car. The demon is interested in making sure that no prophet rises. That is because the meaning of a prophet rising, you don't even understand it. 
So when intercessors rise and they begin to intercede, part of what will be happening is that they are hitting on those foundations. Every night, whilst they are praying, they are hitting on it. And the spirit becomes agitated. So what the spirit are interested in, that's the most But when you begin to administer your priesthood service, the spirit of God guides your intercession sometimes to hit those foundations. So that probably in the next generation, the outcome now becomes different. Sometimes you may not even see it in your generation. The challenge is that we want to see it in our generation. In fact, you want it to be you. As you are praying, you want it to be you. Say, oh Lord, raise prophets. Say, ah, raise, raise entrepreneurs who build businesses and you are, you are thinking that I am the first. <laughs> so when you do it for five years and you don't see it, you kind. You are now using yourself to measure if the thing has worked. It is working. When I when I became born again in, in my mother's village, that place, at that time, that nobody who was a native had gone to the tertiary. Something will happen to you. I began to pray on that land. It was that land I learned how to pray eight hours in a day. That's how we were keeping the charge. Because that was the instruction that the Lord put on me. I didn't even know why. If I if you ask me why were you praying like that in those days I never knew, I wasn't even looking for anointing I just felt like I have to pray I have to pray more if not for that prayer I have to pray. because that thing that I believe God has called me to do it is a taboo in the family that you answer the call of a ministry is a taboo it's a taboo in the family it's a taboo in the whole village the whole village had one church which the people don't attend. <laughs> and the Lord put that burden on my soul that pray. And I began to pray in the morning, I pray in the afternoon, I pray in the evening, I pray at midnight. Ah, the fetish priest, I collided with him, he died. That's why I said I had to go and pray on the shrine. 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. I'll be on the shrine executing so i began to pray when i prayed to some point i prayed and prayed and prayed i was the first who is a native to come to the university by my intercession after i came to school many other people followed that is part of what i was doing when i was praying we were dealing with foundations i wasn't aware when god put that burden on my heart i pray hi sometimes what is required is, is a three year consistency in priesthood <laughs> meanwhile when you do one year you now say ah i'm tired he said the devil knows that you don't have grace so he's waiting for you he said ah, let, let him go one year after you come back he doesn't have the grace to stand for three years you want to deal with foundations and you don't, you don't have capacity to continue you can't alter it because nobody no man of god has arisen from that place it was one of my uncles who tried to rise. Ah, the two of them. One is even dead. Because the warfare is intense. And you are coming from such a place. God has to deal with foundations. So that you can rise and others can also rise. Priesthood tackles foundations. And God is looking for people who stand as priests. And their first assignment will be intercession. Your first assignment as a priest will not even be you. Because see, there are rooms that people have not entered in families. No, when you enter some families, that you become a millionaire is a challenge. You are you marry. Ah, joke. It's not common. They need priests. You have to pray. That prayer that you are praying, you are altering a foundation. People don't know, they just come and then. Uh, You are opening gates. You are opening gates so that people will enter. Yourself will enter first. Then others can enter. You think that kind of thing? Do you know how long that thing has stood? Why do you think that for 400 years nobody has been able to open that door? And he show up and say, I declare by the blood. No. 
the spirit of God will have to take you deeper. Because you don't even know where it is weaved from. It has been weaved from. The Holy Ghost will have to take you deeper. So that you, you pray for like one year, you think God didn't answer. He answered. He didn't answer it the way you want him to answer. Sometimes you've got to answer it in a way. <laughs> I told you that we prayed for about one and a half years. Nothing came out. When we began to pray in those days, we did eight hours every day, non-stop. Not a day that we missed, including Sundays. We prayed here and above. Everything was the same. The only thing that we started seeing most more was like people were coming to church most more. Nothing. But we found out that it was working all the while. We didn't know. It was boiling under like molten magma. Go come. It starts from beneath. And it keeps boiling. When it comes to the surface, it means that what is under is to the point that they can't be contained under. Some of us, God wants to change the story of the family to you. You are the one he has found as a priest. Some of us, God wants to change the story of the territory. I know that we are one of the groups that God wants to alter the civilization of the central region and of Cape Coast. Not that I believe. I know. When we pray the way we pray, people may not understand. They will say, ah, why is that? No, you don't understand. You understand it after 10 years. Because if I don't do what I'm doing, the same person is the one who come and say that, you know, <laughs> you know, when you show up in a family and you are making your, all, all your elder aunties and they are all looking at you say, Akosia. Ah, They know how that thing is like. <laughs> they have been in that position before when they, they felt like. So we have to pray. First of all, you have to pray. You have to do what? Pray and don't stop. Pray and what? Don't stop. The story will be different. I said the story will be what? Zaladagabayas. Your altar must burn. It must burn more than the altar of the witch in the family. It must burn more than the altar of the sorcerer in the territory. My altar, it ought to burn enough to override every demonic, the strength of every demonic altar on the land of my dwelling. Because if not, they will not allow your voice to go out. They will allow what you represent. They will not allow the purposes of God concerning you to come to pass. Why? Their altars are carrying weight. They are weightier than your own altar. When God says, give me two hours every night, you, you are ah. Zalakatayas Bolo Shabatayas Shididiyoas Petekopai Zatiatekepete we are the ones that will rule we will rule the territory we will rule the family by a stronger priesthood Stronger than the sorcerers, than the priesthood of the sorcerers in the family. Stronger than the priesthood of the sorcerers within the territory. It is not enough to have good intentions. The fire of 
my altar cannot go down. Santa, Swadia Tataya, Swadia Tata, Santa, Pati Piti Paka, Rata Tata, Sara Tata, Pali Kuban Tata, Ada Dada Dada, Ada 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 Dada, 